research team and I just want to go over because I've declared um, September snake September and um, I want to go over a little bit about the snakes that I work with so I have um, one of my Nyacaltia which is the monocled cobra here and I want to explain a little bit sometimes I think they speak to me so I know that that sounds crazy I'm not like some crazy snake whisperer lady it's not like that at all but I have grown to understand them and listen and hear and feel and understand their warnings so when we encounter them in the wild we can understand what they're going to do and a little bit about their behavior and how they think and what what they'll do to warn us so one of the first things that she's going to do so i have this is mamie <laughs> we just picked names for the the male and female that i have and it's steve and mamie so this is mamie she's our female she's getting ready to eat so we're going to feed here short her here shortly and she's going to give me some warnings so one of the first things they keep they do is they hiss right they give you this this sort of that's their only verbal cue and that's a warning like hey I'm a Cobra you need to get away from me and then she's going to pop up and she's going to hood because she makes herself bigger she wants to be threatening because I'm already giant and threatening right I'm a big scary monster so um, she wants to say, hey, I'm a scary monster too, so back off. She may come towards me. She may come towards me. That's another warning. That's another way that she can use her resources and her defensive behavior to get me to leave. Now, I'm crazy. I understand that, so I'm not going to leave. But ordinarily, if it's just an average person, they would. So it's very effective. It's extremely effective for when they come towards you, for you to stop, maybe slowly back up, and just let the snake have space and the snake can move. The snake doesn't want to necessarily envenomate us, to bite us. I'm not saying it won't, because obviously there's potential for that. However, that's not what their venom is designed for. I'm too big, that snake is never going to eat me. That snake's not gonna eat part of me. So it would waste its venom on me and then potentially lose a meal later on. So it wants to do everything that it can before it wastes its venom on something. Now, it will if it needs to survive. So if I continue coming at her, then she would feel more and more threatened. She would become more and more defensive. But that's not different than if somebody was coming at me. What would be the first thing I would do? I would scream, hey, get away from me. Well, what, what else would I do? I would kick, I would punch, I would, <laughs> I would do so many different things to try to get it. Hi, buddy. <laughs> so here's the neighbor's dog. Apparently he, um, he wants to be part of this action, but we're gonna have to get rid of him before we do anything more because I don't want that interaction. Um, but it's funny that he's here because we are going to do a little bit of a talk on one of the, the cobras that I have right now that's recovering from some dog bite wounds. So, but anyway, um, yeah, so I would fight. I would use my voice. I would use my fists. I would use everything in my resource, scratch, everything, right? Knee the person. Um, but the snake can't do that. The snake's voice is a hiss. The snake's punch or whatever is it's hooding right and then maybe it'll come towards me maybe it'll even try to hit me with its face with its snout um its nose as a warning and those are those are all ways snakes communicate so if we pay attention and we watch what the snake does then we can understand how we need to behave around the snake one of the other things i want you to watch while we do this is how she watches me. So she's going to watch me and she's, she's keeping me in her sight. Maybe threatening, right? You would keep that person in your sights. The snake is gonna do the same thing because the snake doesn't wanna lose sight of me. As soon as the snake turns around, then all of a sudden the back is vulnerable. Same with us, my back would be vulnerable. So the snake's gonna keep me in its sights. If it spots a potential area, it feels safe, 
then it will maybe go to that area. So maybe it sees a potential escape route. The other thing is, I'm not gonna stress the snake out. If it works with this video, awesome. If it doesn't, she may be chilled, she may be relaxed, she may not hood at me. Um, if she doesn't feel super threatened, and I'm not going to antagonize her to feel super threatened. So um, that's the other thing I just wanna say. So I'm not gonna like boop it on the head or tap it or kick it or poke it or anything like that. So uh, we'll just see what she does. Okay, this is Mamie and you're gonna see her monocle, which is where she gets her name, the monocle cobra. So monocle like old timey one eyeglass to see, right? Hey girl. <laughs> Why are you making this so difficult? <laughs> there she is. I really missed my hook. So I'm gonna use the hook to be able to control her. Right now, she doesn't seem to be too threatened. Her hood is out, right? You can see how she stretches, how long she is. Exploring, looking for a spot. She doesn't particularly like to see herself in the <laughs> trash bin. So now she sees me. She's quite visual. She's going to keep me in her sights. You see how she turns with me? Because she wants to see where I am. She may come towards me, but you can see she's not being aggressive. She just wants to get away. She's exploring this area. The hook is not anything that hurts her. It just allows me to be able to not lose her. This is not her territory. This is not where she's from. She's from the Bangkok area. And to release her here would be detrimental to her health. She would not survive. As you can see, she's actually not super concerned <laughs> in any way. <laughs> she just wants to get away. Ooh. So she just, if you just saw how she tensed up, she just saw there's a chicken over there. There's some chickens in the background. She just saw them. So as you can see, even when she is defensive, even when she's a little bit on high alert, she's still pretty chill. She's still pretty chill. She sees something, she's aware of it, she's tasting the air, she's tongue flicking. They're a diurnal species so they're out during the day most of the time however they can also be out you know as late as 10 or 11 o'clock at night sometimes finding a new place to be they can they can um they can hunt prey at night and during the day And I'm just keeping my eye on her because I don't want her to endanger herself. So I'm just gonna move her so that she stays within my range. And I just want her to feel comfortable. I don't want her to feel stressed. I don't want her to feel I'm not pinching her. I'm not hurting her. I'm not doing anything that's going to cause her to be stressed. When I rescue them from someone's house, I also do this so that they don't feel stressed. They're already a little stressed because sometimes dogs are involved. I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> maybe put her back. So I'm just gonna gently, gently release her tail and then place her in there. <laughs> and you heard her warning, so she didn't like to see the hook when she came back around, she went around in a circle. Okay, so you can see they're not, they're not monsters. When I encounter them in homes, when I encounter them in the wild, there's always potential for danger because they 
are neurotoxic and hematoxic and so they cause an immense amount of pain in addition to um, attacking the neurological system and there's a whole range of things that we'll talk about in another session um, on how the venom affects a person so there's obviously potential there but if if you like I'm not controlling this camera right now so my intern Claudia is holding the camera and so she didn't really move she moved to get a better shot of the snake but she didn't really move and the snake really paid her no attention. The snake wasn't aggravated with her. Now, if she would have been moving around, the snake would have definitely turned, looked at her and thought that's a potential predator. But when she was standing still, they just they just wanna make their escape. They just wanna find a place to hole up and hide. So, all right, thanks. <laughs>